Wubba Lubba Dub Dub YouTube! Welcome to our next installment of the Monster Hunter World Weapon Tutorial Series. Up next we have the Weeb the Longsword. So the Longsword is actually favored by 20% of the community as regarded as their favorite weapon. It is no surprise as it boasts some of the highest attack in the game as well as some of the highest maneuverability in the game. It also comes with a lot of defensive attributes. The Longsword is one of the few weapons with an answer to every scenario. So with that, let's dive in. So before yeeting yourself off to fight two tempered Kirins in the Coral Highlands, I recommend everyone open their hunter notes, especially for the Longsword. So in the top right, we have the Spirit Gauge. The Spirit Gauge does have technically four levels, empty, white, yellow, and red. Basically, if it's not red, it ain't dead. Each level sports an attack increase, and you can think of the red one as the only resource worth spending. So first, I'll talk about how to get that gauge up there. Basically, the first goal is to be able to perform the Spirit Round Slash. The Spirit Round Slash will need about 80% of the gauge to be red to get to. There is shortcuts you can take to the Spirit Round Slash, though, which we will go over. First up, we have the Foresight Slash. It can be performed mid-combo, and in order to be successfully performed, your Spirit Gauge cannot be empty. Those are the only prerequisites for the Foresight Slash. Now, the problem with the Foresight Slash is it all comes down to timing. Now, you must follow up the Foresight Slash with another attack. If you do so, and it lands, you will be able to fill the Spirit Gauge completely. This is the fastest way to fill up the Spirit Gauge, so try to do this and try to get good with the Foresight Slash. It is not really possible to practice it in the training yard, because there's nothing to hit after you counter the barrel. The next counter on the menu is going to be the EI Spirit Slash. So whilst holding the button you use for the Spirit Blade and you press the Evade button, or A, you will go into a special sheath. The special sheath then gives you the option to perform one of two attacks, the EI Spirit Slash and the EI Slash. The EI Spirit Slash, which is what I perform here, is a sort of counter attack. You use this to counter the monster's attack. If you do not successfully complete a counter, it uses up a spirit gauge level. Next, we'll go over the regular EI Slash. This one constantly recharges your spirit gauge, and if you can time it right, you can counter only minor attacks, such as the little bump that Nergigante gives you. First, you'll perform the special sheath and position yourself well enough to win. You have an opportunity Make sure it connects with the monster to regen your spirit gauge. I'll start with positioning. While you're performing the spirit blade combo to get to your spirit round slash, at any point you can perform a slinger burst and it will position you in whichever direction you're facing without knocking you out of your spirit blade combo, allowing you to hit the monster with your spirit round slash more often. It's important to note that you should always go into the EI slash after every spirit blade round slash just so that you have an automatic region on your spirit gauge now for the ways to skip spirit blades you can skip to the end and perform the spirit roundhouse first way is whenever you're going down a slope perform the spirit blade and it will just allow you to get to the end the second way is whenever you jump off a cliff and you perform a spirit blade in the sky, when you land, it will allow you to start at the third spirit blade in the combo. Now for the Fade Slash. The Fade Slash is a wonderful positioning tool, but it also allows you to fast forward to Spirit Round Slash if your spirit gauge is not empty. Now for everyone's favorite Weeb Slash. The Spirit Helmbreaker can be performed by using a Spirit Thrust while at least one Spirit Gauge is active. This is typically best performed with Red Gauge only. There is very few reasons to perform this when you don't have a Red Gauge activated. But when done right, great satisfaction is indeed achieved. 
since I'm fighting a monster, I will go over the EI Spirit Slash, and when used properly, how rewarding it can be. So the EI Spirit Slash is a very good tool in your arsenal to not get smacked by a monster. Yes, it does use a gauge if you fail, but you don't get rolled. So the conventional method of just performing Spirit Blades until you get to the Spirit Ground Slash, it does take some time. So if you are not in the red gauge already, you should be trying to skip the Spirit Blades as much as possible and fast forward to the Spirit Round Slash, which will give you a gauge and increase your attack power. If you have no slope and you have no cliff, the fastest way is to perform a Fade Slash to fast forward through the Spirit Blades to get to the Spirit Roundhouse. You need Spirit Gauge to perform the Fade Slash to fast forward, but you also need Spirit Gauge to perform the Spirit Roundhouse, so it is a moot point. Due to popular demand, I will go over some weapon perks that fit the longsword especially. So first, we have Power Prolonger. This will increase the amount of time that your gauges are maxed out for. However, when you get good with a longsword, this becomes an ability that isn't necessary. You also have Evade Window. This will massively increase the invulnerability window for your counter slashes, your EI slashes and your Foresight Slash. As far as stuff specifically for the Longsword, that's pretty much it. I wouldn't run either of these. I would just focus on your attack, critical boost, and stuff like that. With the Longsword in particular, there is an issue with sharpness loss. Now, if you are close to the end game, you should just run three sets of Kaiser or the Teostra armor. It will give you Master's Touch. Master's Touch prevents your weapon from losing sharpness during critical hit. As every crit you should land should strive to be a critical hit, you should never lose sharpness. If you are good, I am not. The other one is Fatalis, which I do not expect anyone to have. It grants you true razor sharp, which decreases sharpness loss massively. Now, if you are not at in game, you can perform some quests at the housekeeper inside of Celiana and obtain the razor sharp charm. It is a charm that lowers sharpness loss by half. So it is good until you get to the elder dragons. That's pretty much it as far as longsword specifically. Now the best way to get good with the longsword is to go ahead and go to the training yard and practice all of the techniques. Once you have a good beat on things, you can go launch into some monsters and fight monsters. I would recommend that you fight monsters you are familiar with with any new weapon. That way you know when you don't know the monster or you don't know the weapon. You know the difference if you know the monster. So this is my longsword tutorial. If you liked it, liked it. If you have any suggestions for further content that you would like, leave me those comments. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.